I once had a professor tell us that every artist should have their own library. And I remember feeling so validated at that point because I had been hoarding art books for years and years. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artists at Play, and today I am going to show you 10 of my favorite art books. Now, this was hard to choose because I have a lot of books, but I decided that I would choose books that really stood out to me because I remember learning something really profound from them or just something that has stuck with me throughout my art journey. And I also thought it would be good to choose a few books that deal with safety and things like that. So I'm going to start out with general books and then go into books that get into more like specific concepts. So let's get started. The first couple books that I want to show you deal with health and safety for artists. This is a great resource, Health Hazards Manual, 6th edition, for artists. And this book is just such a great book to keep on hand and look things up. It deals with different media and the hazardous like warnings on different things, how to store things. It's just really, really interesting. As somebody who works with a lot of different materials, I think it's really helpful to know. Um, it has a chapter on how art materials affect you. Hazards of various media, so it goes into painting and drawing, printmaking, ceramics, stone, woodworking, plastic sculpture, welding, jewelry. Like, it talks about the dangers of all this different media. So basically, anything you work with, you'll be able to find some information in this book. And then it talks about safety in the studio, how to, like, to know your materials, how to store them, ventilation, fire prevention and things like that. A very, very important book, I think, to have. Even as a reference, this isn't one that I've read front to back, but if I'm ever trying a new material or if I get curious about something, I definitely look it up. I think as artists, we all should be aware of the materials that we're using and the hazards that they could cause us. A lot of us just pick up a material because it looks fun, but we don't really know how it could be affecting us over time. You know, oil paint, for instance, a lot of times when you're working with different types of solvents and things like that, you need really good ventilation. And many people don't know that starting out. They just paint in their bedroom with closed windows and doors and their pets are probably being gassed out. And so books like this are really, really helpful for when you have a home studio or just for good studio practices or just to know your safety so that you really know what you're getting yourself into when you are choosing a particular material to work with. The next one also deals with safety and this is called Draw Stronger, Self-Care for Cartoonists and Visual Artists. And I got this one because I deal with a lot of back pain and I also have pains in my wrists and things like that. I had an injury at work at my day job not long ago that affected both my back and my drawing arm. Uh, it was devastating. <laughs> but this has a lot of different exercises. It talks about how to be ergonomically correct when you are drawing or painting or sitting for a long time because we all know that when we're in the zone we tend to be sitting for a really long time oftentimes in uncomfortable positions that are not good for our bodies and so it basically talks about ways to prevent that and ways to exercise your muscles and your joints and things like that so that you that you can like avoid injury during creating so like you see this one, I have it tabbed, exercises for the back. And this one I did read front to back. I always put a little dot on my books to show which ones I've read the whole thing of. But yeah, so this one, I I have a lot of lower back problems. And so I have this one tabbed so that I can reference this whenever I want to, to do some good exercises. But it talks about preventative measures. It talks about different kinds of injuries that artists get and how to avoid them. I just think, and I love the, the illustrations. It's really comprehensive and fun and it makes it a lot easier to absorb the information that they're giving you. And so I highly recommend this book. I think every artist should have something like this in their studio, just even as a reminder to like, hey, let's not overdo it. Take care of your body while you're creating. Okay, so books number three and four deal with the business side of things. The first one I want to show you is 
artwork by Heather Darcy um, Bandari. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, so I apologize. And Jonathan Melbourne. And this is actually one that I got when I was in school. My professor had us pick this one up when we were seniors because it talks about everything. It talks about promotion. It talks about ways to take inventory. You see, I have all these like different tabs here. Goals, certificate of authenticity, artist statements. So it teaches you how to write artist statements, how to apply for grants, how to write contracts, things like that. It's really, really helpful. And I mean, it's like, it gives you just examples of things to do and practical ways to approach these business things, because it's really, really like, that's the hardest part is knowing how to do these things, learning how to write about your art and learning how to present your art in writing in general. It talks about shipping, you know, like all these different things. I need to like re-reference this book because I haven't read it in a while. Commission agreement gives you, you know, contracts to use to create a commission agreement. So that's why I have like all these bookmarks in here. Art fairs, fantastic reference for the business side of things. And I highly, highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. I was so excited. I'm like, this is why I went to art school. I should have just bought this book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Honestly, that's not the only reason why, you know, the business side of things is not the only reason why I went to art school because to truth be told, that is a very small portion of what you learn in art school. But this book was a game changer for me and I definitely recommend it. And again, this isn't one that I've read front to back completely. I read obviously what I was assigned to read for my class. And then I also read the things that interested me the most, but you can pick it up and use it as a reference guide. You can look up what you are after and go to that page and learn a little something. And the next book is a very similar in concept. This is the updated edition to the handbook pricing and ethical guidelines by the Graphic Artists Guild. Uh, they have another one that has like a big seal on it like this in the front. This is their updated version of that. It is humongous. It is humongous. And not only does this give you ideas for certain contracts and things like that, but it also gives you ideas for pricing depending on what field you are in. And there is a lot like comparative fees for children's picture book illustrations. And it like tells you like how much you normally would make for those things. Talks about flat fee contracts and it breaks it down by the type of book. It's really, really, really in depth and amazing. Again, a great reference guide. Talks about marketing your art. I need to dive into this book a little bit more as well as look back at the other one as well, especially now that I am really trying to buckle down and get more into the business side of things this year. But it's just fantastic. It's humongous. It's a lot. Talks about resale royalties. Like it just has almost everything you'll need to help you get started, at least to give you ideas on where to start in your particular business. It talks about different kinds of licensing and design and like, you know, if you want to license your artwork on products and specific kinds of products and things like that. And so definitely a great guide for when you're learning. It's not as fun and illustrative, like, you know, it's very text heavy, but it has a lot of important things. Comparative fees for package illustration. So if you wanted to design packaging and it talks about hourly rates and per illustration fees and breaks things down like fashion and lifestyle illustration, greeting cards and retail product illustration. So it's really, it's amazing. It's an amazing book. I can't say enough about it. It's a little bit pricey. Obviously it's going to be when you're getting this much, like it is a pricey book but it's well worth it because it's going to help you make money in the long run. Okay, friends, we are halfway there and I'm coming in with the big Bambino. <laughs> this one has been invaluable to me in the past, especially before I ever went to school or anything like that. As I mentioned, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to school for art until like I had graduated like 
10 years before I went to school for art. So I had been out of high school for 10 years. I was self-taught the majority of my life. Most of my style, most of my everything comes from me being self-taught. And then school kind of helped refine things and open my eyes up to the art world in ways I hadn't seen it. But as far as creating goes, that came from me. And books like this helped. So this is the new artist manual, the complete guide to painting and drawing materials and techniques. And this might as well be a textbook. Again, this was, I got this for myself before I was ever in school. And I did read this one front to back. This is a big boy and it's fantastic. And granted this one, let me see. I don't know how old it is now because I'm sure there's materials when was the copyright on this one? This was copyright 2005. And so there might be an updated version. I haven't checked. I'm going to try to link all these books in the description below, by the way. And this video is not sponsored by any of the authors or by any of the companies. It's just, this is what I have learned from. Yeah, I don't know if there's an updated version because there might be new materials that weren't talked about in this, but it is a fantastic guide. Basically an overall guide of a bunch of the different materials. Like we have the different types of supports you can work on. So canvas, stretch canvas, boards and panels, papers, sizing for oils, priming, making primers. And then it gets into drawing media, drawing papers, pencils, colored pencils, water soluble colored pencils, charcoal, pastels, oil pastels, drawing inks, you know? And then it goes through all the painting media, oil paints, mixing oil paint. So like it doesn't just, I mean, it's an overview, but it does, it does get into some tips and tricks on these particular, you know, subjects, watercolor palettes, watercolor accessories, gouache, basic gouache paint. This book is how I learned about gouache. I didn't know gouache existed until I read this book and I'm like, there's another paint. Like I knew there was oil paint. I knew there was acrylic. I knew there was watercolor. I didn't know a darn thing about gouache. So then of course I had to go out and get some gouache because that's how I am. Well, that's how I first learned about gouache is from this book. And then it talks about drawing and sketching and it talks about drawing and observation. So it's like not just talking about materials, but it also has tips on how to use these materials. So here's an example of the charcoal. It talks about how it's a user-friendly medium, talks about the different kinds of charcoal, and then it starts getting into tonal effects, fixing charcoal, exploiting the grain of the paper. So like tips and tricks on how to use these things. It gets into pastels. Now it's not going to be the most in depth on every one of these materials because of course it's got a lot of stuff that it needs to get through, but it's a great way to be like, oh, you know, learn the basics of the material. And if you want to learn more, then you can buy other books or, you know, look online for different instructional videos and things like that. But this was amazing to me. And I can't even remember when I got this book, but I feel like it was like in like, I don't know, 2012, 2013, something like that. It was a while ago. And it was when I was really getting back into creating art again. And as somebody who loves dealing with different materials, as you know, if you've watched my channel, I work in a lot of different media. I, oh, this was just so amazing to me. Oil paint sticks. So we're talking about the properties of those, blending and brushing, and it gives you ideas on how to use them. And it's just amazing. It has a whole section for brushes on oil, like for oil paints. Sorry, I'm getting excited just re-looking at this again. And of course, it has examples of artwork done in different, you know, like different paints and stuff like that, like examples of watercolors by different artists. And I love seeing artwork by different artists. I think it's great that it has examples. Basic watercolor palettes. Oh, like, if this doesn't get you excited looking at this book, I'm like, might reread it from front to back again. I don't even know. Like, I'm just excited looking at this. It gets me, like, so excited to learn and create. I'm such an art geek. I am, I'm sorry, I'm an art geek. But you know what? If you're here, you're probably an art geek too. So welcome. You are my people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, chapter four, where do I start? You know, it talks about how people don't know where to start and it gives you tips on starting to paint beginning beginner painters professional advice getting started first steps and it just kind of walks you through some ideas on how you can get started shows you where you can get different kinds of resources and references 
So yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend this. This is one of my, I probably should put this as number one, but these really aren't in order of my favorite. They're just kind of, like I said, I'm starting general and then getting into more specific topics as I go along. And so since this covers a lot of different topics, that's why it's in the middle of the bunch. What should I paint? I don't know what should we paint. Some fish, apparently. But yeah, so, like, yeah, it talks about how to choose subjects. It has everything. It has a little bit of everything, and it's amazing. I loved this book, and this is a book that stands out in my mind from my young, self-taught self, <laughs> learning, like, so much. Like, I learned so much from this book, and it just, when I was thinking about doing this video, this is one of the first books that came to mind. Like, I knew I was going to have to feature this book. Okay, so number six. It is the epic Color and Light by James Gurney. If you have watched any amount of art book videos on YouTube, you have probably seen this book numerous times. And there's a good reason for that. It's a bop. It is fantastic. James Gurney is a master. He is a modern master. And he actually has his own YouTube channel, which I didn't realize, like, until after I started, like, reading his books and things like that. Because I heard about this book, I think, on YouTube, but not from him. It was from another artist. And it's just, it's fabulous. This man, the way he can sculpt with paint, the way he can create 3D worlds, really, in 2D media, it is just fabulous. And obviously... In order to create anything that looks three-dimensional in paint, you have to know how to work with light, especially. It's a guide for the realist painter. And of course, I love realism. And so I was super excited to get this. And again, this is another one that I have my little dot there. I read this front to back. Now, even if you're not the type, like I am an art nerd, as I mentioned, I like to read and buy art books almost as much as I like to use art materials and buy art materials because that's a hobby in and of itself. But I like to read. I'm a bookworm on top of being an artist. And so I do like to read things front to back. But you don't have to do that. You know, you are you don't have to experience books that way. Experience books however you want. Books can be a great reference guide. Sometimes you just want to get it to look at the fantastic artwork that's in it and to be inspired by the artists that are in the book. And then you can skip around and just read the subjects that really, really inspire you, like mixing color strings. And he talks about the different kinds of light. It talks about sources of light, which direction they'll come from, warm and cool light, overcast light, window light. Like he gets really specific about the way things are lit and the source that the light is coming from because that does affect your artwork. And it really makes you think more deeply about light, which is very important, especially if you're a realism artist. If you do photorealism, then photography obviously is going to be a big part of what you're doing. Of course, it doesn't have to be, but like you don't have photography without proper lighting. You just don't. You don't. It, it literally is recording light. And so photorealism is going to be the same way. Light is very, very important, but even if you're not doing realism, even if you're doing realistic surrealism, or even if you're just playing around with paint, values are very, very important, especially if you want to show any type of form. If you're doing representational art, values are very important, and you get your values from your light or your lack of light and the whole, you know, everything in between, your lightest lights, your darkest darks, and the whole spectrum between. So light is very important when it comes to artwork. And that is one reason why I just was like, oh, I have to have this book. And it's just amazing. It is, it's the best way to create mood. And then of course, he also talks about color as well, because color is important in creating emphasis and things like that. And so definitely highly recommend this book. He also has, I think there's, let me see, Sources of Light, Tradition, light and form, elements of color. So yeah, elements of color, chapter four, he has like the color wheel and he talks about rethinking the color wheel, talks about different ways to interpret the color wheel and how to use color for emphasis and things like that. And he even talks about different color wheels. So not just your typical 
you know, yellow, blue, and red, but also cyan, magenta, and yellow. Yellow is always a constant. And so, yeah, it talks about the basics, but then it gets into more in-depth theories about how to light your stuff. But it's all very comprehensive. It's all beautiful. And you can, ugh, there's just so much to learn from this book. It's a fantastic book. And it is full of gorgeous artwork by James Gurney, which is always an inspiration. Okay, so now I want to get into some more specific topics. Those books were kind of general things that could be used with all media and all subjects. And so now I'm going to get into more specific subjects and specific materials. So the next book that I want to talk about is How to Paint Living Portraits. And I believe I did a review of this specifically on my channel. Back when I first started on YouTube, I used to kind of review art books, but I never did really flip throughs because I wasn't sure if I was allowed to and still until I started watching other artists do, you know, flip throughs of books and stuff like that. So they're not great videos, but I think I did one on this. I love this book, How to Paint Living Portraits by Roberta Carter Clark. And this one stands out to me because this is the book that helped me learn proportion. The way it set it up for me just really stuck with me and it is what I learned from it is something that I have been able to take with me throughout all my portrait work. And so that is why this is on there. There's plenty of beautiful portrait books out there, but this one really helped me out as far as setting up the proportion of the head. So it talks about making an egg head and this is to help you do like different angles and things like that. And it's kind of basic, but it really does show the different angles and how different the eyes look when they're angled down as opposed to angled off to the side and things like that. But the part that got me was these measurements here. And it goes through drawing a male head in profile. It talks about drawing a female. And it also talks about drawing children. And so... It just breaks down the proportions of the head, where the eyes are in relation to each other, where the eyes are in relation to the nose, and how far down the skull the nose is, how far down the mouth is, things like that. And it really, really helped me to look at it as a whole. Like, a baby's face is, all of it is in the le bottom half of its skull, as opposed to... The eye line is usually halfway through the skull on a an adult woman. So, like... It really kind of breaks that down. Now, granted, if you're drawing a portrait of a person, you want to look at that person specifically because it's not going to be 100% this way every single time. Everybody's a little bit different. But this is a great guide, and it gets you to thinking about how to look at the proportions of the face in relation to one another, which is very important when you're measuring and when you're trying to get likeness. How far apart are the eyes? Usually the eyes typically are one eye width apart from each other. So, like... Learning things like that really, really has helped make more cohesive portraits. And it doesn't just talk about the face. There are parts that talk about the body as well. Just like a general how to and draping clothing. So like it talks about finding the plumb line and how to angle your the body. And this really helped me too. This stuck with me like where the weight, where the way it looks when the weight is on one foot and how high the hip is going to be when the weight is on one foot. Like, ah, oh, blew my mind, blew my mind, but has proportions of, you know, basic proportions of the body. Again, you want to look and it talks about hands and feet and things like that. So you want to look at the person that you're drawing. You know, these are just general guidelines to help you figure out like how, how it normally would be but like look at your specific person because they might be a little different you know somebody's nose might be a little bit longer than another person's nose or something like that but definitely helped me learn how to look at a portrait and learn how to measure when drawing portraits okay i think we're on number eight and i'm gonna start getting into specific media and that is colored pencil this book changed my life when it came to colored pencil. This is the Colored Pencil Painting Bible by Aliona Nicholson. I'm sure you've heard her name if you are into colored pencil. She is the founder of the Brush and Pencil Company where she has the 
all the different products like the color pencil blending powder and she has the Lux archival sanded paper and the touch up texture titanium white that we all like to paint over for highlights this is her and this book is fantastic I remember when I first decided that I wanted to try colored pencil which is a long story like a, uh, an interesting story let's just say I got inspired by a dream to start working in colored pencil very strange very interesting but I was looking at colored pencils on Amazon and I had a few Prismacolors laying around mixed in with some of my Crayolas and things like that and I had tried some Prismacolors and I was like wow these are not like Crayola <laughs> and so I was shopping for Prismacolors on Amazon and this book got suggested to me and I'm like wait a minute I saw that cover and I'm like that's colored pencil I'm like oh, no no there's something there's <laughs> there's more to this because I had never seen colored pencil done like this and so I bought the book and let me tell you something <laughs> If you want to learn how to blend colored pencils and how to make it look like this get this book because it was amazing it's life-changing oh I can't even like I had, was already doing realism in acrylic and things like that but this really helped me take my skills to a new level and just working in colored pencil in general did that for me because colored pencil is a very slow medium and I was used to working in acrylics and acrylics really tend to be quicker and I always felt the need to finish a painting in one sitting once I started working in colored pencil it helped me slow down even with the other materials I was working with so I slowed down with my acrylic I slowed down with my oil paints any other material I work with I started to slow down now I'm still quicker than you know maybe I should be <laughs> I, I still work fairly quickly considering the medium like considering colored pencil I work pretty fast for a colored pencil artist but it's taught me to slow down for me and that's what took my work to a new level on like across the board and this book helped contribute to that because it really taught me the ways of blending with colored pencil and then once I learned those basic blending principles from this book I was able to experiment and find my own style in colored pencil and really just take my work to the next level. So if you are interested in colored pencil or if you're already working in colored pencil and you've struggled with it and you don't have this book yet, definitely get this book. She also has one about portraiture where, portraiture, where she talks about how she uses her Lux archival sanded paper and her blending powder and things like that to create artwork. But this one is more about like basic colored pencil techniques like using odorless mineral spirits for you know just basic blending and textures and things like that so highly recommend of course I highly recommend every book that I'm talking about in this video or else it wouldn't be in the video but fantastic okay so number nine this one is for my watercolor folks and this is the complete watercolorist essential notebook by Gordon McKenzie. A treasury of watercolor secrets discovered through decades of painting and experimentation. Again, this is a big boy and I did, I read it from front to back. That's how into it I was. I read this big boy front to back because I found it so interesting. And again, I've had this one for years, years. And I, I have a tendency to buy books about all the different media like I have some for oil painting and things like that but this one stands out to me again because of the techniques I learned from it I was self-taught when I bought this book and I didn't have a word for the techniques I was using because I didn't know what they were called I had just been painting with watercolor I started with watercolor when I was a kid and then I moved on to acrylics and then you know my love for all the different materials kind of seeped in but so you know, some of the stuff I was already doing and just didn't know what the terminology was for. But some of the stuff, obviously, until you know, like you don't know until you know, you kind of struggle with. And I learned a lot from this book. I love this. It also, most of these books have general kind of guidelines for things like composition and stuff like that. And so this is no exception. It talks about ways to approach composition. It talks about color schemes and how it changes the mood and but it also talks about just fun different techniques like I think I learned how to do negative painting from this book I thought that that was a really interesting concept that's something that stuck with me 
composing a landscape painting. Talks about different trees, making clouds. So it breaks down different subjects as well. So let's talk about, we've got tools of the trade. So obviously it's going to talk about your watercolors. It's going to talk about how to check the label and differences between paints and things like that. The types of brushes to use, the type of paper, which is very important. Palettes, like arranging your colors and things like that. Painting techniques. So you got painting with brushes, painting with a palette knife, painting with sticks, painting with a sponge. How paints interact with water, mastering washes, fading out color, working wet and wet, masking, which I hadn't learned. I didn't know about masking before this book and a mix of techniques. And then putting together your composition, factors to consider, developing a series of paintings, intuition versus planning, and just so much. Obviously the color wheel. So it also talks about color theory. Again, it gives you like the general basics of things, but negative painting. Oh, this was just such a fun technique. I was like, I don't know, like that looked so fun. And so I couldn't wait. I jumped right in and did a negative painting after that. And that's one of the things that stuck with me the most from this book. I think it talks about creating different texture. Highly recommend if you are new to watercolor or even if you have been doing it for years, but you want to learn more. I, it's just such a great book. Again, it's a big one hardcover beautiful it has fantastic examples which is always important in an art book highly recommend it in case you didn't know okay so book number 10 is painted landscapes contemporary views and this one talks about a bunch of different artists and this one is special to me because it was actually a gift from my art professors to me when i was graduating I was presented with an art award when I graduated and this was their gift to me along with the award. And so it'll always have a special place in my heart. And this is one that I have not had the chance to completely read yet, but I have looked at it quite a bit because it's just got these fantastic examples and I get to learn about other contemporary landscape artists. When I was in school, my senior thesis project, which is when you, you're getting ready to graduate and when you are an art student, they have you put together an exhibition, at least at, in my art program, we had to put together an exhibition. And mine was landscape paintings with an emphasis on skies. And so they thought that this would be very fitting for me as a landscape artist. And there's just so much inspiration to be had here. And so if you are somebody who loves landscapes and you want some inspiration and you also want to learn about other contemporary landscape artists, this is a fantastic book for that. The imagery is just so beautiful. It's just fabulous. And you get to learn about artists. And that's something that I always love. I love learning about. But look at this sky. Like, holy crap. Look how gorgeous this is. And that was by Stephen Hannock. I don't know how to say that last name, but fantastic. Such an inspiration. And it just makes me want to like get my paints out and work and work on a landscape again. And I love learning about other artists. And that's something else. I wanted to include some art history books in this as well, but it was hard for me to choose. That might have to be its own separate kind of video because I do love learning about other artists. And that's something that there was a huge emphasis on when I was in school was learning about other artists and learning about their lives and what led them to their craft. And so I definitely, I enjoyed learning about art history when I was in school, but also learning about contemporary artists. And so I do have other books that are kind of in that realm. And maybe later on, I'll do a video maybe talking about maybe 10 more art books and I'll include some art history books in that or maybe I'll just do once like five art history books that I learned the most from or something like that. If that's something that interests you, let me know because I can include books that I about specific artists and stuff like that too because I have quite a few books that I've gotten about the masters that have helped me learn about, you know, the people that came before us as artists. But this is interesting because these are our brothers and sisters. These are other artists making a living or who have lived recently and have been, you know, living in the same world we live in, trying to get their art out there and things like that. And so it's really, it's really cool to see somebody being, like how they're inspired by the world around us, 
you know, because we are we're all a little different. We look at the world through our own lens. And so this book really gives us a view into how another artist views the world around them. And so I just I love that. OK, so <laughs> that's it. That's my 10 favorite art books for right now. <laughs> I'm always buying more. If you would like to see a similar video down the line, including, you know, some art history books and things like that, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have a favorite art book, let us know what that art book is, because I'm always interested in reading some more about art, as always, and I'm sure that other viewers of this video are as well. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.